Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 113 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. Happy Memorial Day weekend, everybody. Oh, happy Memorial Day, I should say, because that's yeah. launching this. Happy Memorial Day. It's so <laughs> nice to have a day off after having almost 60 days off in a row. I really need a long weekend to spend time with the people I've been spending the last two months with. <laughs> well, I have to say that I work the whole time, and I'm not saying that like, ha, ha, ha. I'm saying that like I'm actually really looking forward to having Monday off and having three days out of here. I'm going to wash my car, clean my house, go for runs. So I'm super psyched. Yeah. Yay. So Memorial Day used to be the start of summer, public pools opening, barbecues. Is that even happening? Are people doing that? That's, I don't know. You know, in Florida here, we're up to being able to be in crowds of 50 with social distancing intact. And so I've seen a lot of crowds at the beaches and people just hanging out. So yeah, my sister's having a small get together and I'm going to go and she's doing a barbecue and you, you got to be smart still, but I think life's coming back to a little bit of normal, whatever the new normal. And I quote that because I hear it everywhere. How about you? It's still what? Th- degrees no it's actually a bit warmer we're in the high 50s thank you very much it's a long sleeve t-shirt weather things are great (laughs) yeah business is picking up i was surprised how much we've increased this week so it's a good thing i'm bringing in another driver a handful of more technicians it's a good sign good for you i'm super happy same here even implants and aesthetic cases are coming in diagnostics It's faster than I thought, so I'm super happy. Actually, it's not faster than I thought. I really genuinely all along thought it was going to come back pretty quickly. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, I know a few offices here in Indiana. There were some that were going to start after Memorial Day weekend, and there's a good handful that had a June 4th start. So I think we're going to see you know, some good increases over the next couple of weeks. That's right. Let's do it, lab industry. Come on. And getting into June... As we mentioned last episode, June is CDT and Dental Laboratory Technician Appreciation Month. Nice. So we did this last year, and we want to do it again. We want to give everyone a chance to give that special thanks to that certain person or a group of people that have made a difference in their lives. It's real easy. All you got to do is record yourself on a phone or on your computer and email us the audio file at info at voicesfromthebench.com. Just say your name, where you're from, who you're thanking, and why. It can be anybody in our industry. Maybe you want to thank a friend, a family, even a sales rep. You can thank your whole lab or anybody who deserves it. And we all know that many of us need this thanks during this interesting, strange year that we're having. I really like the fact that they celebrate CDTs and dental lab technicians, that we actually have a month to celebrate it so come on guys send us your audio yeah let's get it rolling let's it's it. gonna be june before you know it <laughs> yeah I so know. far we've gotten zero and you're making us look like idiots <laughs> okay i'm gonna send you one nice i promise i'm gonna start begging our group here real soon all right we're not below begging no, just never saying. Never. or above i should say we're not above begging <laughs> i am neither below or above i just beg <laughs> So we want to bring you another Bender's Perspective this week. Barb and I had the chance to talk to Sean Nowak from Nowak Dental Supplies. Sean comes on to talk about how, as a distributor, he handled the early days of the pandemic, what products became in demand because of the pandemic, and how they stay relevant when so many labs were closed. So join us as we chat with our good friend, Sean Nowak. We'd like to welcome to the podcast this week. We're having a conversation following our Vendors Perspective series, Sean Nowak from Nowak Dental Supplies. How are you, sir? I am doing fantastic, guys. It's good to be back on the podcast. (laughs) All right. We appreciate everything you've done for this industry over the years. And it's no secret that labs aren't the only people affected by this pandemic. It's spread 
all the way to the vendors and the distributors. How's Noack Dental Supply doing? Yes, the trickle down effect. So, you know, if, it, if the patients don't come see the doctors, the doctors don't call you guys, you guys don't call me, I don't call my manufacturers. So it, it's following the flow. <laughs> Yeah. That way I'm really, you know, trying to push hard even on my friend's side of things that, hey, patience, go see your dentist because I know eventually down the chain of command that I will, you know, see some business come back out of this. So we have definitely, as every one of your listeners, I'm sure, had a terrible April. Yep. <laughs> I think the only part that helps me out and my sister Brandy is that we've gone through travesty as a company before. You know, 2005 hitting, Hurricane Katrina putting 22 foot of water in our company. Yeah. We've been through hell. We know how yeah. to get out of it. And that's exactly what we're doing. We saw this coming. We did our best to keep our employees whole. We didn't worry about that whole PPP funding. We made sure that they were, you know, staying with their paychecks because our employees are who keeps us alive. They're, they're more of the face of the company than even we are. They're the ones that talk to our customers every day. So we wanted to make sure that they were happy. We knew we could weather the storm and we still are. None of us are back up to normal production as of yet. But we see it every day. It's increasing more and more. You know, we look at our package count, our total sales, and I can see those are constantly moving in the right direction. Yeah, that was my next question. So are you are actually last couple of weeks or three weeks that you've actually seen some work come back in? What's it looking like for you? Yeah, we have. So um, let's see. It was, um, I can't remember the exact date, but at some point during this whole pandemic, we decided, Brandy and I, that there was no reason to have every employee in our company anymore. We basically told them all, look, we're going to pay you, but we don't really want you to work anymore. You know, go sit at home. Yeah. We wanted just to make sure, one, there was not enough business to have every employee in our office. Yeah. Two, you know, we just wanted to control what we could in here. So we didn't want people that were, you know, going out to Walmart or going wherever and then bringing it back into our office. So we wanted to control the spread of the virus as best as we could. For four weeks, Brandy and I were the only two in the company and wearing the hats of customer service, accounting, shipping, receiving, you name it, it was being done. Wow. What products were you still sending out during the pandemic? Because, I mean, obviously not everybody shut down 100%. Is there something that stands out that people still got? I can answer that. I can answer that. Fire away. I called Sean a couple times begging for, I think, alcohol, right? Propofol? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I shipped that bottle of uh, Fireball out that next day for him. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, it was, you know, like, like Barb said, it was a lot of alcohol, denatured alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, because we all saw that the printing side of the world really increased a lot over this. So a lot of resin went out of here, but then still a lot of traditional items. Denture teeth was going out of um, acrylics, porcelain powders. So they're like Elvis, like you said, there was a, still a lot of labs working, you know, not maybe to the extent that they used to work at. But hey, if you're out of a bottle of porcelain and you're working, you have to replace it with something. True. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about all of the extra disinfectant everyone's probably probably ordered from you during this time. It has been amazing the amount of orders that we've seen on the PPE side. We actually even created a brand new website, dental-ppe.com, mm. just to kind of focus on those items, the gloves, the cavicides, the disinfectants, Purell hand sanitizer, the mm. face masks that we can get, you know, the N95s that we're able to procure. A lot of these items might take a little while to get, but we still rely on the manufacturers. We've always dealt with the 3Ms, the halyards that are known companies in our industry that have good quality products that we're able to sell. Yeah. I think that's a great idea for a separate website because like, I, you know, that's what everybody's looking for right now. I think I called you for face masks too. So are those things starting to come back where they're available? They weren't like a month ago? We are starting to see a lot more of the face masks. The level ones and level twos are starting to roll back in. Level mm -hmm. threes and the uh, the N95 masks, those are the harder two to get. Now, obviously, in my opinion, OSHA or, or the other organizations might not agree with me on this. I, I don't see a lab needing a level three or an N95 mask. You know, if yeah. you need something, a level one is sufficient enough. It'll keep the virus away. That's all you really need. Dust and everything else that dental labs utilize face masks for, you don't need to get the expensive mask. Stick with a level one and you're good. I agree. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong about getting some N95s and distributing them to your doctors so they Definitely can start not. working. 
and then you can start working again. <laughs> that is exactly right. Now that's why we're seeing a lot of labs utilizing their printers to make face cereals for them. So, I mean, it's really cool to see our industry trying to shift how they were doing business and either giving those products away to their doctors. Because like you said, Elvis, if they're working, then you guys are working. Or, or some totally. are using it as a little bit of a cash flow, a little cash bump to help them out. Yeah. Some of the products you distribute, did you see this beforehand with products that you got from other parts? The pandemic started in other parts of the world. So we really try our best. I would say we're about 95% of our products come from U.S. manufacturers. Oh, nice. And distributors of U.S. goods. Not to say that they're not made overseas. Yep. You know, that we all know it's a global world that we live in. Absolutely. And not every product in the world is made in the U.S., but a lot of them are housed here in the U.S. So most of the companies we deal with hmm. are in the U.S., you know, a couple in Austria, a couple in, in China. But for the most part, everything we see comes from the U.S. already. That's great. Okay, so you weren't affected pre-American pandemic with products and, and distributing. We were not. I mean, I'd say probably the hardest part, like I said, was those face masks that we yeah. all know they come from China, Taiwan, other places across the world that it's just yeah. the amount of people now that are utilizing face masks, not just in our industry, you know, just walking in the grocery store, you'll see tons sure. of people wearing them. So it's really put a strain on that product itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you get into the toilet paper business during all this? I, I stayed out <laughs> of the toilet paper business. That, that is one that we we definitely stayed away from. But, but now we're seeing a lot of orders for Quattro and Bannerman both have kind of re-engineered their dust collectors and turned them into aerosol containment units. So we're seeing a lot of doctors buying these, you know, uh, wow. kind of souped up dust collectors, I want to call them, that, that'll kind of sit right next to a patient's face and be able to capture the aerosols that are spraying out when they're doing a grinding or anything. Wow, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I actually went to the dentist or a week ago to do hygiene, and they weren't using any of the anything that would make a spray. So they were doing it the old-fashioned way, where they just kind of scaled your teeth a little bit and cleaned you up and send you on your way. So even for hygiene, it's changing. So it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I watched a video just yesterday on watching a cavatron in work, and they they changed the dye color to a red dye color just to see how much aerosol <laughs> would come out and and splash on the scrubs and, you know, the face shield. And it, it was really eye-opening. I think if a lot of people would watch that, not in a scary way, but it was just really like, wow, you don't realize how much is leaving the yeah. patient's mouth and bouncing off everywhere. Yeah, that kind of freaked me out a little bit, I think. Or if I was uh, working in the dental office, no wonder they're kind of like really super sensitive about it because it is going all over the place. That's not going to keep me away, though. Nor I. <laughs> so you brought some of your team members back. Are you guys practicing social distancing and wearing masks and, you know, everything that you're supposed to be doing? Gloves? So Yeah, so right now we are fully staffed back. We brought every one of the team members back. Uh, that was probably about... I'd say about two to three weeks ago, we started with everybody back. Obviously, we, just like everybody else, has different protocols in place now. Good. So if you are out in the warehouse or in rooms that other individuals uh, gather, you have to wear a face mask at all times. If you're mm -hmm. in your office by yourself, then no, we don't require you to wear that. Uh, we do have hand sanitizers spread out throughout the office. Every Friday, we go around with Lysol wipes and clean the office down. Sweet. Even, Sweet. Uh, even Willow, my dog, has worn a face mask. So she's, she's even participated <laughs> in this event as well. <laughs> I'm sure she loved that. <laughs> what have you been doing to stay relevant? to labs during this time. I know that you've put on a few webinars, I believe. We have done a couple webinars and we're just really, we're doing that, the old school touch. So we're calling people, we're sending out letters, sending out emails. To me, yeah. I, I still fully believe in in the value of picking up a phone and calling somebody, you know, yeah. or sending out a handwritten letter. I, I think just the power of that for our customers to know that, hey, you know, after 76 years, we're still here. Mm -hmm. A virus isn't going to take us down. We're going to continue on as long as I possibly can keep the company going. Good for you guys. Yeah. I love that. That says a lot. Yeah. I was just saying the other day how so many vendors have just disappeared during this time and none of them even called to check up or to see how we're doing. And it kind of shows you who the good ones are. Yeah. 
Yeah, even I just a uh, simple text message. Hey, man, just looking in on you, seeing how you're doing. Even for the lab side, do that with your doctors. You know, just that quick little little reef. If you don't want to pick up the phone, don't want to FaceTime somebody, I'm, I'm loving Zoom. That, that's a great little tool to use just to say hi, get to see what their face reactions are when you talk to them. But like I said, just pick up the phone, just shoot them a text. Just, hey, doc, how you doing? Just checking in on you. If there's anything you need, let me know. Don't ask for anything. That's that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I've been doing that too. That's one of the things that I got to do for a little everybody. It was just kind of reach out to, to people. And most of the offices had somebody answering the phone and just, how are you doing? Are you safe? You know, anybody coming in? And I think it's it's really important that they know that we care and that we're there for them, especially now. Definitely. They will clearly remember those that checked in on you. I go back to Katrina again. I still remember the vendors that reached out to us still to this day, 16 years later, and said, Sean, is there anything we can do to help you guys? You know, let me know. We can help you out. And this is the same thing. We're all in this together. Yeah. So it's not like there's one company that's doing better than the other in our industry. We're all here, you know, lean on each other. You know, even if it's just you're having a bad day, call somebody and just talk to them. You know, it'll make you feel a lot better. I think you called me too. Texted me and called me. I'm sure I have. (laughs) Next time I have a bad day, I'm giving you a call, Sean. (laughs) I am a great psychiatrist. (laughs) (laughs) So what's next for NOAC? As we all start to open up, as we know, many dentists are start working again. We're back here in Indiana on week three or four, things are building back up. What's NOAC doing to be prepared for this flux of everyone coming back? So we're fully stocked here at our warehouse. We've over that eight week period that it was just Brandy and I, I had a lot of times to to work on different projects that have been sitting on my desk forever and and how to to make our inventory levels better, see what we needed to bring in, what what we didn't sell anymore, working on a brand new website that will be mobile friendly, even look into some kind of app that a you know a lab could have on their phone and scan a barcode and place the order that way so we're, mm. we're trying to you know get ahead of the future just to make our lives easier for our customers ease of use is a big thing in our industry right now yeah that's a hundred percent i mean we're still sticking to our our, our virtues and and uh, the foundation that the company has always survived on and just customer service that to me is the the king of everything that you can do And like I said, that reach out, that part that you really connect with your customers, it's all about that customer service level. It's great. And I agree. So I got to ask you a a personal question. So are you swimming again? I know they closed all the pools. Are you getting back into it? Our pool has officially opened on Saturday. So it is very nice to, uh, to get to go to the gym and and get those laps in. Uh, luckily enough for me, I do have a pool at home that I had been able to utilize during this whole thing. Yep. Uh, so I didn't really lose much in that realm. But it, it was very hard on certain days just to get the motivation levels to, to go out and jump in the pool and continue swimming. And swim still. I saw you on Facebook. So you're basically swimming still, yes, right? You are, You've got yeah. some the thing that I have is swim. basically almost like a, a treadmill for the water. So I am staying still Sweet. in one position. And even the events that I was getting ready for have both been canceled. My English Channel swim mm. isn't happening now until 2022. Oh. Alcatraz swim has been canceled. So when you lose those kind of motivation, uh, you know, to continue on and, and have a goal out there, that was the harder part for me. So now I got to yeah. get my mind around that, hey, it's okay. Continue on. We'll, we'll make it. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good attitude. That's for sure. I've seen you plenty of times on Facebook. I'm like, oh, man, that looks boring. <laughs> it is extremely boring. Now, luckily, I did find a good pair of headphones that, that are waterproof. And so that, that passes the time. Yeah. So that, I, I definitely love my open water swimming and, and swimming in a regular pool. Uh, you know, going back and forth, watching the black line. <laughs> yep. Woo. Awesome. Well, Sean, we appreciate all that you do for the industry with your time on the foundation and what NOAC has done for our industry, supporting us so much. Yeah. Sticking to it during this pandemic. And we hope that once we get all back up and running, we can support you back. And we will. That sounds great. I appreciate you guys having me back on. Absolutely. I believe it's only been at least 100 episodes since I've been on. So thank you. (laughs) Oh, you're not bitter. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Frankly, I was episode number eight. 
Nice. Wow. That's insane. One of our biggest fans, too, and we appreciate all you uh, talk about us and support us. So thank you. Hopefully we'll see you sometime soon. Uh, let's hope so. Hopefully some yep. of these trade shows come back online and we can all uh, get together. I think uh, the first trade show that opens back up, they should just have the first day set up just so we can talk to each other and, and get to hug each other. Like, yeah, no man. business whatsoever. Yeah. That's just what the first day is dedicated to. That's a great idea. Whoever has this first convention back, let's make sure we have a day of just catching up. That's right. That's a great awesome. idea. Sponsored by No Act Dental Supply. <laughs> and voices from the bench. And voices from the bench. <laughs> Touche. Awesome. Have a good one, sir. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you so much, Sean Nowak, for coming on the podcast to give us a different perspective of our industry. Sean Nowak Supplies is a great company, big supporters of our industry, and our podcast. And we thank you for all that you do. So, Elvis, let us travel back to LMT Day Chicago 2020 when we were set up at the Argon booth and we had many people stop by. Today, we bring you a collection of three conversations. First up are two last year students from IU Fort Wayne School of Dental Technology, Bob Martin and Sam Kencha. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. They come on the podcast to talk about why they signed up for the program, what it's like, and where to plan on going after graduation, which obviously they probably have graduated by now. Congratulations. Then we talk to the customer service team lead at Triad Dental Studios. Gloria Brown has been running that department for many years there and gives us a perspective that we don't always hear, but we all have in our labs. And we know how important customer service is in our industry, especially after uh, some of the things that we've talked about this past week. We need to be more excellent in handling our clients. I think it's a great interview. Then we talk to Jim Collins. Most people know Jim and know what a great guy he is. He sits down with us to talk about past times and what he's doing now. It's super amazing how many stories he has. So join us from the Argon booth at LMT Day Chicago. Back when we didn't have a new normal. <laughs> Back when it was just the old normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whitmix brings you one of the most exciting things on the market today. Dun, dun, dun. The patient. Yes, it's true. The one missing component in any case that we do is the patient. And now you can change that. Whitmix introduces the Bellis 3D Pro Professional Face Scanning Solution say that five times. This new practical addition to dental lab technology provides us with a fast, easy, and affordable way to capture a 3D facial scan or smile design. With this app, you can easily capture a complete 3D facial scan in less than 30 seconds. Which is super fast. Collaborate with your dentist to create restorations using your CAD software. Show your patient their new look in advance. They accept it, you do the treatment plan, and you use the scan for the model and articulator alignment. You can now put a face to your digital workflow with the Bellis 3D Dental Pro. Learn more about this sought-after product at Whitmix.com. And be sure to catch the amazing Lee Culp presenting a Whitmix webinar entitled Bellis 3D Dental Pro, Creating the Virtual Patient. That's on June 9th. Visit Whitmix.com forward slash webinars for more information or to sign up. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. All right, Lab Day Chicago, LMT. We are here at the Argon booth, and I just got joined by two gentlemen up in my state of Indiana who is attending the Fort... Now, I'm sure I'm going to mess this up. IPFW. IU Fort Wayne. IU Fort Wayne yes. Dental Technology Program. Correct. So we got Bob Martin. Yes. And Samuel... And Sean. So what year are you guys in the school? We're both seniors. Seniors. So how long is the program? It's a three-year program, about one year of prerequisites, making it a bachelor's program. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So let's talk about Brooke. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, we so, can. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you guys interested in doing this field? How would you hear about it? For me, I was actually wanting to go to dental school. And so then you they found out how terrible that was? Yeah. <laughs> 
I, uh, I got approached from, from some of my advisors that there's a dental technology program here, and instead of going through like the prereqs of doing like the biology or the chemistry route, you're able to kind of get like the hands-on and like knowing all like the dental anatomy and occlusion and stuff like that, and all all five specialties. And I figured that'd be the best way so to go. So you can, when you're going to dental school, you can go to technology instead of the biology. Yeah, you can. Why would you not choose that? Well, it's, it's a bachelor's specific thing yep like if you use our program as a bachelor's degree you can use that as your prereq for oh. dental school mm-hmm. vice the two-year programs that are out there interesting yeah. okay so you're still going to become a dentist we'll see i'm looking into it still yeah but yeah what about you how'd you fall into it well the long and short of it is my mom has been a dental assistant for 25 plus years yeah. and i was active duty navy i got a okay. chance to go visit one of her offices while i was on leave And as I was down there, they had an in-house lab. The funny part of it is a lab tech kind of saved me, and we were standing around talking, and it was my mom and some of the doctors. Yeah, yeah. And as the other ladies that worked there would come by, they were all around my mom's age, roughly. I was in my late 20s at the time. They all either wanted to date me themselves or me to date them daughters. Well, as Not a bad problem? Well, (laughs) it is when it's in front of your mom. That is true. That is a bit awkward. So it was a little awkward. But the lab tech they had there was a prior Navy guy, and he happened to walk through, and we started talking. Well, he invited me to go back to his lab and check some stuff out. Yeah. Now, fast forward a few years, I had to get out of the Navy and started thinking of things that I could go do and started looking into the lab tech programs and then actually started looking up Brooke Pratt's accolades. And that's what brought me to Fort Wayne to go to school, Vice. But you didn't do any dental technology while in the Navy because I know they have a good program. They do. Uh, I was actually a – I dealt with gas turbine engines for main propulsion and generators, did electrical and electronics. It's a little bit like teeth, right? Oh, a little. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And everything runs on electricity. I mean – yeah. So then you got out of the Navy. Got out of the Navy in July of 2017. Started the program in August of 2017. Did you already live in that area, or did you move to go there? I moved up from Bristol, Tennessee. Wow. I'm originally from Indiana. Okay. On the, over by Lafayette. Sure. So what do you guys think of the program? I mean, be honest. She, Brooke will not hear this. <laughs> yeah, because she doesn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, seriously. No. So you guys walk into this first class you take is what our first class was dental anatomy and dental occlusion yeah i mean starting off i mean of course like we knew nothing about teeth or anything like that and i mean after like compared to then to now i mean i i think it's a fantastic program yeah yeah for sure oh it is hands down a great program we go through a lot and with it being a bachelor's having extended that extra year there actually wasn't a graduating class last year mm-hmm. yeah. so it actually gives us more hands-on time sure more lab time more experience how many people are in the class with you guys ours is seven seven seven, seven. Yeah. yeah there's about that many in the second year and mm-hmm. then in the first year program there are about 12 14 something around there, there. Yeah. yeah would you consider yeah. the the course is hard not terribly difficult, no. no. Yeah. Uh, I think that scares a lot of people. I mean, it's challenging. As mm-hmm. it should be. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, I mean it shouldn't be a breeze, but at the mm-hmm. same time, you don't want to overwhelm all Oh, absolutely. So. I mean, it's not. There are going to be days like any program you're in. Yeah. I mean, I've been through the military. I went to a different college before I joined the military. Yeah. Even just working, there's going to be days where you feel overwhelmed. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, with the program, you know, with the directors, the professors, we have everything. Yeah. And they're always there to get you through it when you're riding the struggle mm-hmm. bus. You know, that, sure. that day you're cruising on a sinking ship, you know. They're yeah. What is the, uh, what's the percentage of book learning compared to actually being on a bench and working on things? Most of the lecture time for any class that has lab and lecture, it's usually one hour of lecture to three hours of lab. Good. Mm-hmm. Like so, to hear that. Like to hear so that. So it's mostly hands on nice. in program. So it works out really well. If you don't become a dentist, are you going to stay in the industry? Yeah, for sure. Yeah? For sure, yeah. Do you have any idea what labs you're looking at? or Currently, right now, I'm not, yeah. not in particular. But um, I know right now we're about to go into our internship, so kind of like going to different labs and yeah. kind of checking them out. In the Fort Wayne area? Or? Yeah. Um, we're actually, well, he's going down to Tennessee for lab, and I'm going to um, Image Dental for my internship. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Who's the owner of that? Uh, um, Jim Summers. 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 Yeah, I know yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because my lab's in Indianapolis. Yeah, Zion's Zion's yep. So, I mean, yeah. I know those guys. Yeah. What are you going to do in Tennessee? Which lab? Uh, we're going to Premier Dental Arts in Kingsport, Tennessee. Okay. I've actually got to meet up with those guys here in just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they're a full-service lab, nice. very technologically advanced. I went down and did a lab visit with them in January. Very impressed, very yeah. excited for the opportunity to get in and start and working And that's your home them. base. Well. Kind of. That's where I'm moving back to. Yeah. To me, it feels like going home, even though I grew up outside of Lafayette in yeah, Indiana. Yeah. So. That's cool. So what's next? How much school you got left? We're in class about two more weeks, and then we start our internship till the end of the semester. We'll graduate in the middle of May. Wow. Mm. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. What advice can you give to people that are thinking about getting into this industry? I mean, do your research and then just go for it. Don't yeah. be scared of it. Yeah, for it's, sure. Do you find it hard to find a job, you think? I don't believe so. There's a lot of places out there really mm. looking for labs. I'd hire or, you know, and for lab everybody techs. and anybody. What do you like? Fixed? Removable? What are you into? I like fixed. I really like the ceramics. But now I've gotten into the full contour waxing when it goes along with Crown and Bridge. Just Wednesday, Joseph Colbeck stopped by and we did his OMP yeah, workshop. I saw that online. And yeah. That was fantastic. What do you want? To, what do you want to do? Fixed or removable? Basically, when I go on my internship, I've already talked with those guys. I'm going to bounce department to department through the internship, get a little experience yep. everywhere, and then just see what kind of works best. Yeah. I really like the porcelain aspect of the fix. The answer but is all of it. As a but, <laughs> excited for any yeah. opportunity I can get into that's not bending wires. For digital ortho. is bringing it all together. Mm. You'll be smart to know both sides of it. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. that's one thing with the school. We don't get a lot of digital experience. It's mostly hands-on analog. Yeah, but that's what we can't teach in a lab. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can send you to a three-shape course, and they'll tell you how to use the software, but no one's going to sit there and learn what this school is teaching you. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's the hardest part. What do you like to do? What do you, you I'm fix? more fixed, yeah. yeah. The crown and bridge ceramics aspect. I, I enjoy that a lot more than the, yeah. the removables. Do you guys get to do zirconian school? or We, uh, we did a few. Yeah? A few, yeah. But is yeah. it mostly casting? Mostly mm -hmm. PFMs when we're doing ceramics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have been able to do a few PFZs. Oh, nice. We do have the ability to scan dyes at the school, and then we'll send those out to a local lab, and then mm -hmm. they'll yep. turn around and send us back our zirconia Your copings. Copy, and, and then you stack for us. Yeah, on it. Very absolutely. cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys sitting down. Yeah. Uh, appreciate very cool. Opinion. Thank you, Elvis. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. It was for great to meet you. And uh, what are you guys looking to do at the show? Classes? He's got a couple classes yeah. today. I've got one tomorrow and one today. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of get around, check out some of the new tech. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a busy, big show. Have you been to the other exhibit hall? We actually just got in. Our train was running about 90 minutes late coming into <laughs> Chicago. So mm -hmm. we just got yep. here. So other than talking with Brooke right over here a moment ago. I appreciate you were the first being the first we stop. To, well, I yep. appreciate That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Yep. Sam, thank, thank you. you so much. We'll talk All to right. you guys later. Right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Here we are, LMT Lab Day Chicago 2020 Saturday. Get your badge up. Hold on. And we have Gloria Brown. G L O R I A, Gloria. It's a good name yeah. for the Triad Dental yes, Laboratory. Yes, one of our favorite family labs. Yes, it is. With Triad with the Martins. Yes. Yep. So, well, what do you do there? I'm a uh, customer service team leader. I started off with them in 97 and uh, hired to answer the phone in the mornings. Yeah. I was a part-time. And after a week, I can't just sit here and pick up a phone every few minutes and flip through magazines. not in my work ethic. Yeah. So I went full-time within like two months. Wow. And I've been with them since then. So 22 years. Really? That's yeah. That's amazing. So how has it expanded from you just answering a phone to what now? When I first started, we had PFMs, full cast. It was either Empress 2 or... What is that noise? It was either Empress 2... Was that your phone buzzing? I don't know. <laughs> it's like a um, train whistle. Eras. You know, it was very, yeah. very simple. I started scanning with Procera, and I call it the Pong version, oh. where it was just the straight line, you know, the diode red around it. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, plugged in the phone cord from Matt's office to do AOL dial-up. <laughs> So wow. it was just a straight two-dimensional <laughs> line, and now I see the things that are out there on CAD yeah. CAM, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So let me ask you a question. So you do customer service, but you're at a show like this. Mm -hmm. What are you checking out? 
I'm checking out everything. I'm not technical. I do try to learn some things, um, and I love to listen to Matt interact with oh, that's, yeah, anybody he that. walks by. He'll walk like a minute, if that far, and people <laughs> are stopping him and talking to him. And I listen to the conversation, and I'm like, this isn't just, you know, for Greensboro, our 43-person lab. This is a very big industry. Yeah, and it's, it really it's, is. It's eye-opening to be here. I always say about our industry is that it's so amazing because whether you're competitors or best friends, mm-hmm. we all share, mm-hmm. tell each other what we're doing, how we're doing it. Everybody is just so amazing and friendly. So yes. it's really great having this podcast because we get introduced to so many more people and we just put it out there and we love it. So just saying. Yeah, indeed. It's really good. Awesome. There's Martha. Martha, she's proud of you. <laughs> I love my coworkers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give us the dirt on working for Martha. Yeah. No, there is no dirt on Martha. I know. Our lab is perfectly clean all the time. She has a very high level of oh, expectation for clean. Yes. We've been so in our I. building since 2003, and people come in, and it's like, how long have y'all been here? A year? And it's like, no, we've been here for quite a few. That's yeah. so important. It's very important to her that we're a medical facility, and I'm saying that in quotes, yep. that it's clean. Yeah. We I, want I'm anybody to come that. into I've the lab pictures. at any time and see, yep. you know, they can't, don't catch off guard, that the place is always open and clean. So <laughs> you say you're a customer care lead? Yeah, my title is customer service team leader. Team leader. How big is your team? I have two full-time ladies, a part-time lady, and four dr- drivers, and then a part-time driver. Oh, nice. wow. So That's quite a... Quite a team. It you is. Look yes. Out for. Uh, all of our drivers are retired gentlemen. Yep. We do um, that too. Yes. It's really good. It helps them to get out from under their wives' thumbs. Yep. <laughs> yes. You know what? That is really smart. They it are is like good. the it greatest. Keeps them, and they are a really good team. They communicate with each yep. other. It's really good to see. And yeah. they, they entertain each other. And then the doctors appreciate them. We actually had a doctor give one of our drivers like two dozen donuts the other day to bring back to the lab for everybody. Wow. Just as an appreciation because wow. of their interaction. Yeah. Because they're Super representing important. triad. Yep. Well, we talked about this yesterday with a couple, how important the drivers are. Oh, yeah. And how they're yes. the face of your company. Absolutely. And do you guys do any sort of training with you your know, drivers? We or how really do you should because the, do- the doctors talk to the drivers like they know things about cases. Isn't that hilarious? And they will always yes. say, just call Gloria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll get the right information. But it is amazing how much they expect the drivers to know. It is. And they do ask questions, but, you know, we, maybe we should do something more formal. Yeah. What kind of training? Like technical training? Not or so much tra- sales not, training? Not I would so much technical, sales. but more just, you know, going in there and making sure they're your face of your company and you're wanting them to show, gotcha. you know, maybe training is not the right word. We do show them, like, when we're packaging up cases because they'll stand around and yeah. watch and they'll want to see which – offices all the other drivers are going to because they they kind of know each other's runs but they don't drive them yeah. yeah so they do see the crowns where we're packaging them up and they have that kind of interaction but they don't know like this is a pfm versus this yeah. is a full and i don't cast. need them to know that but i need them to be able to do that customer service that's instant they hear complaints i have drivers that's come true. back to me and says you know, I talked to Jennifer at such and such mm-hmm. office, and she was pretty upset about what happened the other day. And yeah. I'm like, or they'll well, what tell happened you if the they other see day? Another case or another lab? They always tell yeah. us there's another lab's mm-hmm. bags in there. Oh yeah, yeah. and or I always ask, why don't you grab they're it? High intelligence, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Well, our drivers yeah. are actually very good when they're out. They'll take pictures of new offices that they haven't seen before. Interesting. Or if they've moved locations. They'll also tell us sometimes gossip going on in the yeah. offices, which helps us actually in our interaction with them. Good. Not that they're Smart. trying to tattle on them or anything, no. but, you know, it helps us. Absolutely. They, it's our intel, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it, it helps a lot. Yes. Yeah. So what do you do about sales? Are, are you part of sales at all or...? I'm part of sales in the fact that I represent Triad, yep. but I am not a salesman. Okay. Um, I, I love our company, and I love our doctors. You must. You've been there I, 22 yes. years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I want the best for them as much as I can. And if I, if I hear in a conversation with them that they need help with a product, I'll say, let me get so-and-so to help you. Yeah. So they can explain things a little better than me, but this might be a good fit for what you're needing. When Excellent. You, when you communicate with offices, yeah. what's the percentage of talking to dentists and talking to assistants or talking to front office? Oh, Who's your most? Front office, front office yeah. probably 
uh, for me, probably 80% of my yeah. calls and maybe 10% are with the assistants. And I talk to a lot of doctors. Yeah. If you can get them on the phone, right? Yeah. Yes. They've always got that head, head person that's, oh, he's too busy. Or, yeah. I give out my cell a lot. Mm-hmm. So I get text messages from clients. And so I. I get photos on my phone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a really important tool. My nowadays. husband will be looking at my phone. And he's like, oh, that's lovely. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll be scrolling through or, my or photos. My wife's like, what's that? My I niece scroll likes back. to look through my phone and she'll say, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Preps. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Fun. Yeah. Is that somebody's mouth? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Why do you have it? And well. it's not sexual. <laughs> well, thanks Definitely for coming not. on. Thank you. I appreciate glad it. To, glad to have you on. Yeah. Thank That's you. a different Thank perspective. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I appreciate you. it. Have Thank fun. you. Thank you. Can you give us a tag like Voices from the Bay? This is Voices from the Bench. Nice. Ooh, I like it. I like okay. it. <laughs> so we're here at LMT again, and we're with a Mr. Jim Collis, CDT, who I met the other night at the Removable Roundtable, who's awesome yep. and has a huge crush on my girlfriend, Renata. Just saying. <laughs> Let's just put that out there. He's yeah. got a girlfriend, he told us. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we don't want to ruin relationships. Oh, don't man, there we it, go. Actually. There yeah. we go. It's all over. So, Jim... I know you're well known in the industry. How did you get started? Uh, it's really that's a really great question. I've got a really great answer for you. You don't remember? I re- no, I remember. <laughs> I remember like it was just yesterday. I had a great relationship with my mom and dad, and they cared about me and my two brothers a lot. So he was worried about our futures. So I had a really good group of people that I hung out with in high school, and they would come over all the time, and they would call my dad Mr. C. So they'd come over, and even when I wasn't there, and just sit there and talk with him. So uh, he was a cool guy, man. And he started to talk to my friends, and it was time where they had all applied to colleges and mm-hmm. so forth, and they were getting accepted. So he'd come over and tell my dad, hey, I got accepted to Marquette. A great friend of mine, Bill Murray, he got accepted to Marquette. And Kevin O'Connor, God bless his soul, I love you, buddy. He got to a great school, and all the girls we hung out with, it was really a great crowd. So I was sitting down one day at dinner, and my dad looks at me, and he says, so where are you going to college? I know where all your friends are going. And I said, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. He said, well, what do you want to be? And I said, I, Dad, I don't know. Other than a forest ranger, I, I don't know. Wow. And he said, why don't you be a dental technician like your cousin? And I said, what's a dental technician? This is that dinner table. And once again, it's a family member. Yep. 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 And it was Socrates, Sacco, uh, Capianis. Sock, I love you. Um, his mother was my godmother. So, uh, you know, he was telling me about, about him. And I said, but, yeah, don't, don't dentists just, don't you people go to dentists to get the dentures and crowds and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know anything about the industry. And uh, he said, no, no. He said, you go to the dentist to get it fitted. But, you know, you go, you know, the work is sent to a laboratory to manufacture it. So I said, oh, it sounds interesting. So he said, why don't you go over to your cousin's lab where he works at and see what it's like. So two days later, uh, it was a weekend. I went over there on a Saturday. He was working. And I just loved it. I fell in love with it. I thought it was so cool that, that, you know, you could make a smile. You could make somebody smile. So I don't know. I, I just I applied to Triton College. I didn't know, this is a great story, I didn't know that you had to apply for the dental technology school separately. So here I am thinking I'm going to start, you know, first day of school. And, yeah. and I get there and they say, oh, well, you have to apply for that separately. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, you have, that's a whole separate. Oh, no. So I was like, oh, my God. So I, told, I went home took the bus home you didn't even like start regular school you're like i don't want to do this yeah no i knew what i wanted to do yeah but i no i didn't i didn't take any class or anything because i just thought you'd go register i had no you know i was the first one in college in my immediate family so i went home and told my mom and so she called up Sacco, socrates and uh he gave her the name of the head instructor over there Ah. so she called him and then he talked to the dean and they called back, and they said, you start tomorrow. Nice. Just like that. And there were probably, I don't know, 150 people on the waiting list back then. Wow. So wow. I went over there, and they put me on a bench where he had to sit in a high stool, which I hated. 
but I was in school learning something, and uh, I became friends with Bill Morozik. I, I, I know you all know Bill yeah. Morozik. Uh-huh. Um, Jesse Beretta, Paul Nadeau, uh, the, the four of us um, were, were like the four musketeers. And I, I can say this now because a couple of our instructors have passed. Yeah. One of them is not, Wayne Zara, who I look up to immensely. Um, Bill was the smartest, so Paul copied from Bill. Jesse copied from Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and I copied from Jesse. So we all got the same That's grades. That's a great story. It was funny as that. <laughs> so, uh, but really, it was because of those three, those three guys that, um, that I actually got through dental technology school. Um, and when I did... Uh, I got a job working at a major production lab for a year, and I didn't like the quality they were producing. Hmm. So I left there. When you say that, when you went there, what were you doing? Were you always into removable? Or? I, uh, yes. I, Wayne Zara, my instructor, and his son is in the industry, by the way. Mm-hmm. I think you know him, too. Yeah. Wayne took me to the side. He said, you know, Jim, I think you'll do better removable because he was the removable instructor. He said, I think you'll do better at removable than Crown and Bridge. I think I see your hands going that way. Yeah. So I listened to him. Wow. And I really liked him. And, you know, when I ever, you know, the glamour was in, was in Crown and Bridge and ceramics. But I listened to what he said. And, you know, I, I hope it worked. You know, I hope it worked. But after I worked in the production lab for a year, I just didn't like the quality. So I kind of quit and got fired at the same time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fate, as fate would have it. Yeah, and uh, um, I, I got a job at Illinois Dental Lab. It was on Mannheim Road, right down the Eisenhower from my house. I worked for him. For, uh, and in the meantime, I had gone on a, um, an interview for Northwestern University Dental School. So I didn't hear from them. So I got this job at Illinois uh, Dental Lab. I worked for them for one day, and then Dr. Miller from Northwestern Dental School called my mom at home. Wow. And said, we'd like Jimmy to start tomorrow. Wow. Again. That's awesome. So I wow. showed up there the next day, and I thought it was just going to be, uh, a, a, you know, a lab technician, you know, working at the bench. It turned out that I was an instructor at the age of 20 years old to the dental students from what I had learned. And what wow. I had learned from that first year, was first I was making custom trays for like a month, yeah. And I was making bite rims and, and articulating. Yeah. And then we lost, like, one, the head setup guy died. Another person left. So the next thing, you know, I was doing it all. Along That's what with happened another to me. Person. Yeah. <laughs> my, and, uh, my supervisor died at the bench, actually, on a weekend. What? And the next Monday, yeah. I took over the department. And I, you have to learn real quick I, when you do. You, it's, yeah. it's like you just have to do it. it yeah. And the, the funny thing is, is that you don't see the busy time coming. You don't see that. That learning time is your, oh, you're just right in the middle of it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you find yourself that way. And luckily, it, it worked out for me. I did really well. I just liked the quality at the lab. So Dr. Miller called. I ended up going there. And I wasn't a lab technician anymore. I was an instructor. So I was teaching wow. dental students that had a four-year degree and I had a two-year degree. Or, and then they were getting their four-year degree in, in dentistry. Um, And they all liked me because I was younger and I knew denture work. I knew a little bit of crown and bridge work, and it was one of those things, too. I sit at the the bench with the student and wax up a crown, and all of a sudden I got pretty decent at it. So back then, the students had to do all of their gold work. And they remember they used to do pyroplast. I'm showing pyroplast? My, pyroplast. What is that? I'm showing my age now. <laughs> um, pyroplast. They would do gold and gold crowns. You would cut out a window, and you would mix up this liquid and a powder, and you would pack it in there, and you would put it into this, like, under pressure, like a billion pounds pressure, you know, like 5,000 degree water, you know, 320, yeah, yeah. 312. Yeah. But, you know, for a long time, you basically had to boil it and then take it out. Hey, buddy, what's up? <laughs> and then, sorry. No, um, you're fine. It happens when you do That's why we live. like live. Yeah, and then, uh, and then you finish it like it's like a hard acrylic. So the big thing that came out was isoset, and that was the first composite that you would wow you would put a, a um, uh, an opaque on there, and then you would pack in the uh, the body, the the cervical, and the uh, incisal. And then you would put that under, like, 90 pounds pressure in boiling water. 
Wow. It wasn't like your composite. Sounds like a lot of a lot of Sounds like a lot, a lot of fun. Of going on. Well, I, I don't like monomer. I had cancer, so I don't like monomer. Funny thing is my oncologist, uh, when I first met him, he asked me, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, I'm a dental technician. And he said, oh, a monomer. I was like, how do you know about monomer? Wow. He said, do you think you're the first dental technician ever walked into my office? So I didn't like monomer. So I really liked the idea of composite. And I kept saying, why can't someone just make a composite that you can press on and cure it? And see, back then we didn't have light cure. We had boiling under pressure. But then they advanced and they came up with everything that we have now. Wow. wow. That's so, insane. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. I've, I've done it all. I've cleaned plaster traps, which, oh, you know, everybody says you have to start at the bottom. You don't want to start there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so are you doing um, digital dentures? Um, I'm doing digital dentures, uh, but I work for Solvay Dental 360 now. Yeah. And we sell millable partial pucks. I know I'm not advertising anything. No, I've fine. seen those. Yeah, yeah I've seen good them. Things okay. about They're expensive. Them. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably when you break all the, you know, the pucks are like 185. So when you break it down, you get two per puck. Um, when you break it down, and I, I mean delivery and cutting out of the puck and yeah. finishing it, when you break it down, it turns out to be about actual cost and labor and everything, designing about, you know, 117 that's not too and 122 bad. for the bigger puck. So yeah. depending on what you're going to sell it for, that's if you're buying the puck and milling it. So it's, it's really not as expensive as you think. And it's really great for a smaller True. lab that has gone digital. It's great for larger labs. Because they have an alternative because everybody wants to go metal free, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a great alternative. True. It, it's not a flexible and it's not a metal. It's right in between. You know, with flexibles, the teeth tend to tend to wave and move. Yeah, yeah. And, and we don't want that in dentistry. You want something to be solid, but we also want something to, to be forgivable. And, you know, we've had a lot of patients forget that the partials in their, are in their mouth. Nice. So, so you cool. know, I had my laboratory. I ran my laboratory for, wow, I opened the lab at the same time I was teaching at Northwestern. So I was 20 years old teaching. Um, I opened my lab when I was 21. By the time I was 23, I had eight people working for me. And I was coming in at night doing all the billing, doing the quality control wow. and all that stuff. And after 10 years, uh, I just decided that I think my path was my lab since I had so many people working for me. So that was my path. Mm -hmm. I left university, which taught me so many things. I imagine, yeah. Oh, my God. I sat chair side for – I was doing implants when they were the blades that looked like forks. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they would yeah. Try, they would, wow. they would yeah, the blade. cut a trough yeah, yeah, yeah. and drop yeah. that thing in there. Nice. So, yeah, you're talking to an old guy. <laughs> Just look at my hair. You know, or what hair? Yeah. Should, you know, Back it's up. funny. These two, my, these two earpieces are covering up all my hair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks yeah. good, too. After I went to my laboratory, I decided I wanted to slow it down and do nothing but quality. There are a few things going on that I didn't quite catch. So at that level, you, you have to be on site. Yeah. So I left the university in really great terms. I went to my lab, and I cut it back, cut it back, cut it back until I was just a specialty niche with one person. Good for you. And, Excellent. And, and I charged a lot of money for my dentures. Uh, yeah. Some of my dentures, an average denture was like 1100 bucks for, for an arch. That's wow. excellent. Um, and I found myself, the doctors that would pay that were far and few between, but the ones that paid that stuck with me all these years, and I actually retired with those same clients. Wow. And now a couple of them are retiring Wow. So, that is yeah, nice and, story. The, and I learned how to do the coloring of the composites. Dan Boskasevic, I got to give you a shout out. He's the one that got me involved with GC. Um, oh, and with the, their Gradia? With their, with their Gradia. Yeah. Um, and that's then I, cool stuff. Yep. And then I started using Shofu's material, Saramaja, yep. because it has Zirconi in it. I still use Gradia. Dan was really, really good to me. And from there, I, I went to Vita, lecturing for Vita. And I mean, I've been with everybody awesome. really yeah That's a great, yeah because everybody does know you yeah and i and i, I still have my laboratory why. i still yeah. have my laboratory you still so, have your lab well no i still had it back then oh back then yeah. yeah i retired three and a half years ago and then i worked started working for solvay like the next day so when you retired you. did you sell your lab did you uh, close it or no i kind of gave it away wow i 
didn't want. I wanted someone to give me a lab where you can get eleven hundred dollars yeah. for a tincture. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to sell it. Yeah. Because if they couldn't keep up what I was doing, I didn't want any friends of mine to be angry that I sold them a lab that they didn't get any work from. Yeah, yeah. Not that I, I'm not being arrogant, but you know they they were used to that service. They were used to that kind of quality, and most labs are trying to get the work out faster. And let's face it, our costs are astronomical. And you know too, you're both you both own labs. When yeah. you you know, when you break your costs down, it's like, what? I'm working. I'm making five bucks an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so um, so you ha- it is scary, and and you want to take care of your people, and then you find out, hey, I'm one of your people too. You know, say, hey, buddy, what's up? Yeah, this I guy is popular. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody comes up to you, say man. hi to him, and he's waving so the whole right. time. And <laughs> <laughs> you got to stick around, man. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, That's you're all fine. right. We love it. We like uh, it. Um, uh, Half the people we talked to over the weekend, they they stop and wave. Yeah. Like, I turn around. I'm like, who? And I'm yep. like, what? And there's three yeah. other people waving. Well, that's another thing. This industry is so close. You know. Yep. Um, there Took are a the couple. Words right out of my mouth. You know, there are a couple of guys in this industry that just don't get it. They'll go to anybody for money, but for the most part, everybody in the industry is tight. You can, I, mean, I can go up to, and you too. You can go up to any any one of these booths and say, hey man, I got a problem. And they'll be at your lab in yep. a couple of days. Yep. You know, and, and it's not because of business. It's because that they know you. They care. Yeah. It's a small, small world, and everybody knows each other. And that's what I really like about it. You know, everywhere I go, I was in, in London, and lo and behold, I've got like three guys that I know from Facebook, and I waved at them, and they pointed to me, and they wow. only spoke German, and I only spoke American, but we were still yeah. talking. Aww. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's um, cool. It is really cool, especially now. Um, you know, but there's some whack people, but, you know, for the most part, everybody here. There's I mean, some whack people. There's always yeah. bad seeds. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. Not you know, many in this Barb's industry, though, I but, can tell you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but not many. I was I afraid to come over here because I heard about two of you. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. No, I but, think our industry is to the point where we're starting to realize that if we're going to survive in this ever-changing market, we got to band together. Yeah. And do it together. And it's all going to trickle down to all of our individual labs. But if we don't start thinking as a, as a group, we're not going to get anything done. When I won the award for um, Educator of the Year. Yeah, well, when was that? Oh, that uh, was two years ago. I was going to say, say, I remember that's seeing when I met you. you. Yeah, um, yep. w- yeah when, I, when I won that award, I gave a real short speech. The way the story goes is, and it's exactly what we're talking about now, Dennis Urban took me to my first Yankees game. Yeah. I've been friends with Dennis for years and years and years. So we're sitting there in the seats, and, you know, they were up by, like, nine runs. So he said, you know, why don't we take off? We had dinner first at the great steak place there. Yeah, yeah. I'm all about the food. Great. <laughs> and then we're sitting there, and he said, you know, we should take off, uh, beat all the traffic. So I said, yeah, whatever. This is really cool. So we're walking up the stairs, and Dennis, he was limping really bad because he, he needed a knee replacement. So I'm kind of pushing him up the stairs. When he reached the top, he grabbed the railing, he turned around, he put out his hand, and he pulled me up to the top because I had, I had a bad hip. So the two of us were laughing. Yeah. You know, it was so hard. And, and basically what it amounts to is that, you know, we have to push each other to the top. We've got to yeah. push each other to that next level. You know, we've got to pull each other up to the top. You're the, not the one pushing. Yeah. You know, and when you get up there, you have to walk together and you have to share everything because if you don't, this industry is going to go down. Yeah. And there are some people, I, and, and, and part of that story goes is about, boy, about 20 years ago now, I think I was at the Indiana State Dental Society meeting in Indianapolis. I knew a lot of people down there, you know, it's still like younger in my career. So I went down there as a, just an attendee. And I attended one of the lectures from somebody we all know. You've actually interviewed him. I'm not going to say a name. Ooh, but, um, juicy. Yeah, I, I don't no, care. No. I, I really don't care. I'm bigger than him. And I attended the lecture, and, you know, afterward I went up to him and I said, hey, uh, you know, because he came up to me and he said, what do you think, man? What do you think? And I said, you know, it was pretty good. It was organized, but you showed a lot of stuff. And you didn't show anybody how you did it. It was just pictures of your work. Yep. And it was okay, yeah. but, you know, it, nothing jumped at me. And I said, I want to know how to do that. You know, you didn't show anybody, you know, just pictures. And he said to me, and this has stuck with me all these years. He said, and he looked me right in the eye, and he said, I only give people 
a little taste. If they want to know more, they have to pay. And I said, but isn't your sponsor paying you? To tell people how to use their product, he just laughed and walked away. Wow. wow. So I told myself I would never, ever be like that. And, yeah, I get paid by, by sponsors to make a salary with Solvay, which yep. is an unbelievable company, by the way. Shout out to Sean Sirock and, and Dwayne Fish sure. and, and Tim, my coworker, and Laura. Uh, we'd be nothing without you. And Chris, I can't forget Chris. He's my buddy. You know, I mean, without those people yeah. behind you, you're really, you're really nothing. And even though I get a salary, I will still help people on other stuff that they need, whether it's Shofu or GC. I still get calls from people when I was lecturing for all those guys. I still get calls, or companies, call them companies, all those companies asking me questions. Yeah. And that's okay. I talk with them on the phone for hours. I, I still have to send out a PowerPoint on implants to somebody that called me a couple of weeks ago. I'm sorry. Um, I've just been kind of crazy, but I, I'm going to send Get on that. that. <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to send him one of my yeah. PowerPoints. I don't care. If he can learn from it, that's fantastic. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. That's what it is. If you can't share stuff, I mean. Don't get on stage. Exactly. Seriously. Exactly. I mean. That's what it's all about, or that's what it should be all about. And there's a lot of people I mean, that here that, that aren't on that stage. They don't, you know, they're not, they're not paying and paying to lecture, but they're still sharing what they're doing. They're asking questions. Right? This is how I do it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the way this whole industry should be. Yeah, you I know? agree. That's what we're doing here. That's what Ex- we're doing exactly, here. Exactly, exactly. And I think this is fantastic. Yeah. I, and I, now that you're on it, you can I, spread the word. You I know. Can, I've got I it. I feel it. so honored. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is great. I actually have headsets on. This is really yeah. cool, man. He's looking very professional. I know. These headsets do a lot for our professionalism. They do. Well, they make you look good. <laughs> I wore, we like I wore this, a decent so. shirt that doesn't have stains on it yet. Yeah, appreciate you know, that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank I you. I put on cologne. So. Oh, yeah. Well, Jim, you know. we appreciate you. you. We appreciate all that you do for the industry. Oh, like I said, even guys. before I met you a couple of years ago, your name came up. I'm sorry I didn't get you in Visions. I'm sorry I missed you at the Eastern Conference. Uh, I think I saw you. Yeah, I yeah. Missed him yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's one and of those finally. things. finally... But Yay. it's a good time. It yeah. happens when it happens. Yep. Well, my wife's going to hear this, and I'm going to get in trouble with her. So, <laughs> Then you better give a shout-out to your wife. Uh, yeah. She understands what this is all about. Oh, yeah. You, know, you I have mean, to. If she's living with you, you, know, well, <laughs> you got to know it. Yeah, I don't know if she wants to be around, but, the, <laughs> but she understands. She's met a lot of the people that yeah. I know. It's funny because there was one year. I think it was like three years ago. I was staying out front, and there was Renzo Chiappi, Ted Smooty. Uh, oh my God! There were like three other people: Todd Young, Denturis. They were all they yeah. were all there. And T.G. Hornisher, may you rest in peace, buddy. He was out there. And my wife pulls up in a minivan, and I open the back door, and I said, "Come on, guys, just load your stuff in." And she's like, I said, "Yeah, we got to drop them off the airport." You know, because I lived near the airport, yeah, so yeah. we dropped them all off nice. the airport. It was like a shuttle. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it, again, it's helping people. You just can't just them out. Yeah. you can't just walk by. Yeah. yeah. So awesome, Jim. Appreciate thank it, sir. You. Hey, thank, thank you guys appreciate so much. It. Thank you. Have I a have good to rest come down and visit you at the at the lab. Any day, anytime. Uh, no one coming to Indiana. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I, I can drive down there. It's yeah, really but it's close. the same as Illinois. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. My mom was um, a Hoosier. Oh, from, there you from, go. From Hammond, Indiana. Uh, yeah, sure. And all that land, they owned a bunch of uh, restaurants. Now all that land they sold to the casino. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll talk to you All later. right, guys. Thank all you right. so much. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Many thanks to Bob, Sam, Gloria, and Jim. It's so nice to hear so many perspectives that we don't hear in very often, and that's really why... Elvis and I like traveling and going live and just talking to as many people as we can. But we encourage anyone in our industry to talk about and send anyone interested to the dental technology schools. It's a super great way to strengthen our industry and provide us all some employable technicians. There are not many left, guys, and we all know what a great profession this is. They are doing a great job working on future generations. All right, everybody. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Happy Memorial Day. See ya. Bye. Boom. That was beautiful. Awesome.